Hey guys, Armin Gun here today with the pig. This is the M60 belt fed semi auto machine gun, and this thing is friggin' cool. I'm loving it. This is in the Mark 43 Mod 1 configuration, which is really cool. You got a railed top cover, railed forend, bipod mounted to the uh, the forend as opposed to the barrel itself. A lot of good little upgrades. So today guys, I'm going to walk you through how to run this gun. As you saw, we did a little bit of shooting for the Keen Observer. Yes, I only ran five round belts and that sucks, but hopefully it won't suck for much longer. I have it under very good authority from sources that I trust that it is both fully legal and fully illegal to run more than five. So I'm going to err on the side of caution until the rest of my licensing comes through and I can uh, shoot as I please. But just because I'm limited to five, doesn't mean I can't link a bunch of those five round clips together to give you a montage. Let's, uh, let's go through the controls. We're gonna do some more shooting as we go but I want to give you guys the rundown on how to run this thing. Let's get into it. So controls wise, we're pretty simple here. The original pig had uh, two selectors, full auto and safe. This one has the same two selectors. Unfortunately, it's just semi-auto fire and then safe down here. This is a butterfly selector, it's ambidextrous. We got that on both sides, but you can also see cross block safeties are pretty common as well. Both are fine and I've seen examples of both on these guns. Now, loading and charging the gun is a little different. Semi-automatic to full auto again, there are some differences. The full auto guns would lock to the rear. This is a semi-automatic, and therefore it doesn't, because this is designed to fire on a closed bolt rather than an open one like the original. Now, the actual feeding mechanism and such is pretty interesting, and if you guys saw my MG34 video, this will all look fairly familiar. And that's because the Americans based the M60 very heavily on the MG34 and 42. They saw it was a super effective machine gun in World War II, and they wanted to design their next light machine gun based pretty heavily on it. Again, this was designed fairly shortly after the World War II. Saw a lot of testing late 1950s, 50s before it was adopted. So we're gonna pop open the top cover here where all the feeding happens. That's just this little latch back here. Pop that up. And then you guys, you can see this is how this works. This is a spring-loaded one versus my MG34 was not. Here's your top cover. So there you can see if you pull back the charging handle, you can see into the chamber there. So again, a full auto gun, you'd have had this thing all the way to the rear. It would lock in place, drop your feed tray, throw your belt of ammunition in there, close your top cover, which is meant to be closed when the charging handle is to the rear. So it picks up into the feeding opponents properly. And then that would stay closed. And you basically just have a hot gun ready to go. As soon as you pulled the trigger, then the bolt would drop and you'd be rambling it up. Again, with the semi-automatic designed to fire on a closed bolt, it makes operation a little more tricky. Now, this piece up in here is spring-loaded, so, so you can theoretically drop the top cover now, cycle the action, and it works, but you do get some marking on the feed cover from doing that. Again, it was designed so that you could do that without actually damaging anything, but, I mean, it is what it is. As this, uh, this little cam right here runs down this slot as this obviously this this cycles and that translates the forward back motion of the bolt into you know this camming the feed pulse to advance the links in so you can keep feeding the beast these pigs chow down at about 600 rounds a minute i can demonstrate a little bit with this little uh, five round linked of ammo so this is going to be here and this is going to get pushed over dragged over that little thing each time each time the links advance and that's going to be happening by this thing cycling. It's going to, again, these are spring-loaded. They're going to run over a round, get behind it, and then pull it forward, passing one each time. As a round gets chambered, it strips off a link. The little links poop out the side of this little chute here. It all looks really cool. Check out Larry Vickers' video on the Full Auto one. They got some great slow-mo footage of the thing just cycling and spitting out brass out of the lower part and pooping out the little links right there. It's just, it's the reason I got an M60 was that video. And again, this is your feed tray here, so you can just lift this up and you can expect the chamber manually by pulling back the bolt, confirming that it's clear. Operate the semi-automatic version, you would do this. You'd close the top cover and you'd rack that action and then you'd be hot and ready to go. 
Moving up from there, we've got a carry handle that uh, folds down and clicks down on the side. It's got a little detent there, so it stays up or down. Really nice folding rear sight that is both adjustable for elevation and windage with uh, just tool-free adjustment, which is really nice. Then up front, you guys can see we have an adjustable front sight as well. And uh, all in all, a pretty, pretty slick little unit. Bipods fold out like this. You just pull back, drop them down. They are adjustable as well. I got a few different preset lengths in there. They're no AccuTac, but they get the job done. And then of course, what M60 would be complete without a barrel shroud? Hashtag shoulder thing that goes up. Pretty cool unit there. Man, this thing is a friggin' good time. So let's do some more shooting, but guys, if you enjoy my content, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at arm.and.gun. I am very active on Instagram. If you guys prefer Facebook, you can see a lot of my Instagram content ported over on Facebook as well. And I'm now on Parlor. But the main plug is for Instagram. I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well from the armory, stuff you don't see anywhere else. I do giveaways on there as well. You can check the description below for links to all of those, as well as a number of affiliate links to various gear. Purchasing through those does help support the channel, full disclosure with that. But you can pick up some really sweet gear such as this UF Pro, Bolt Action Coffee, TA Tactical Targets, and more. And I even have discount codes for some of them. All right, guys, let's get back into some shooting here. All right, guys, let's check out the free recoil in the M60 here. This thing's a pretty heavy, but it soaks up that 308 recoil really well. Let's, uh, let's check this out here. Just again, shooting safely into the dirt, right over there to check the free recoil. Yeah, guys, really, really mild shooter. This thing, for a 308, man, this thing is pretty easy to deal with. <laughs> Too much fun. I love this thing. All right, guys, it's time for that TM Garantham trigger pull. Be forewarned, this thing is horrible. It's really weird as well. The semi-automatic function on here definitely leaves a lot to be desired. So safety bites about there. Semi-auto, you just keep pulling, keep pulling, and then she goes. It's actually, to be honest, it's really light. You just don't really know where it's gonna break. There isn't really a reset, and then sometimes upon caulking, you just don't even get a trigger pull, like right here. I pulled the trigger, nothing happened, because it was kind of dead, but then I let go. I go to pull again, and then she drops. So it's kind of a weird thing as well. And I suspect that's purely with the semi-automatic. It's kind of got an interesting system to get around, you know, making this thing work with a closed bolt. Not ideal, but again, for a civilian-owned, belt-fed semi-auto, this thing is really friggin' cool. And this literally is an M60. All, all these other components are M60 components. It's simply that the receiver is slightly sized to only accept the semi-automatic components. That's the only difference. All right, guys, let's check out a quick barrel change here as well, because this does feature a quick change barrel. Now, this is considerably easier from a full auto gun because they fire from an open bolt. So when you pull the bolt back, it stays locked to the rear and you need the bolt back in order to get the barrel out. But otherwise, it's very simple. Now, I just have to keep it held back because it's semi-automatic, but fold in your charging handle, the barrel latch assembly's right here. Push this little spring-loaded button, flip up this latch, and you are free and clear. That is friggin', friggin' cool. The barrel has the gas system all attached that goes with it. Pop in a new barrel, just the same. Drop it in, drop down that latch. For me, I'm gonna let go of that charging handle, and she's locked in, ready to go. Pretty slick. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks a ton for tuning in. If you want to learn more about the pig, I will have a full breakdown disassembly video on it. That'll be up in a couple days. And then a couple days after that, we'll do the Gun 101 overview where I give you guys just enough knowledge to be dangerous with the pig. All right, guys, thanks a ton. Catch you in the next one. Arm and Gun, out. To all of you out there with someone in your life that uses the phrase, when pigs fly against you. This is for you.